All right, so at this point, you have your project open, you've imported your footage, your sequence is set up, and you are ready to edit. But before we actually get into it, let's just quickly go over what each of these panels does. This one right here is your project panel, and this is where your footage is kept and organized. Up here is the source monitor, which is basically if you double click, it's the preview of your clips where you can cut in and cut out and then grab the stuff that you want, which you're gonna drag into your timeline, which is down here. And this is basically where you build your edit or your story. And when we drag something in here, you can see that up here is your program monitor and that's just the preview of the timeline. Okay, so now that we have a general idea of what we're looking at, let's start the editing process, beginning with the project panel. So I'm just gonna expand this so we can get a better look. And you can see in here that this is obviously where our clips are that we imported. And there's two different ways to look at them. You can look at the list view, which I'm looking at, which gives you all the information about the clip. And there's more as you slide it over here. When we flip over to icon view, then you can see that now you have a preview of each of your clips. This is much nicer in terms of viewing what you have, except it's much harder on your computer. So it might crash, just be aware of that. I usually work out of list view, but if you're in this one, there's a bonus you can scrub over. So I'm just kind of hovering over this clip and I can go through the whole clip. If you click on it, you can then use the slider to go through and preview it. Or if you're clicked on it, you can hit the space bar and then watch the clip with sound as well. And just so you know, you can also rename your footage if you want. So just click on it and type in what you want. And you can make folders to help keep things organized by clicking right here on new bin. If you don't see it, it's probably because it's over like this. So just stretch it back out. When you click on it, it makes a folder and just call it what you want. So I'm gonna make one folder of Sammy and one of Jaden. And then obviously you just drag in the clips that are relevant. So Jaden, I'm gonna drag in here. I'm gonna click on this Sammy one, hold shift, click on this one to select all the rest of them and drag those into Sammy. Now when I go back to list view, you can see that they're much more organized and I can have all my Sammy clips together and then all my Jaden clips together. So once you have everything organized in your project panel, and as you can see, I've renamed everything, it's now time to actually start editing. So I'm just gonna bring this down and I'm gonna bring this over now because mostly what we're dealing with right now is gonna be up in the source monitor up here. So to get your footage up there, all you have to do is go to whatever clip. So I'm gonna use this East Sammy Easter 2 clip. You just have to double click on it and then it's gonna show the preview for that clip up here. And there's three ways that we can kind of go through this footage. So the normal way is you can push play and just watch it normally with sound or hit the space bar. So space bar to stop, space bar to play it. The other way is that you can just, like this is a longer clip, so you can just take this blue thing here, click on it, and just drag it and move it ahead to different parts of the footage. So if you know you have a clip like over here that you wanna get, then just scrub along that way and then push play to watch it when it's over there. Or you can use these two things right here. So this is just one frame at a time forward and one frame at a time back if you wanna find one precise spot to take the clip from. So really what we're looking for here though is we're looking for little bits of footage that we want to keep and drag into our timeline. So I'm going to push play here and just watch this. So let's pretend I want that part right there, okay? So then I'm going to watch it and then I'm going to go back. I'm going to scrub back like this and then I'm going to use this bracket right here to mark in. That's the starting of the point that I want to keep. And I'm going to push play, watch it again, and then maybe right there or maybe I'll go back a bit. I might scrub back a bit and that's where I'm gonna use this bracket, which is mark out. Or as you can see, you can also use I on the keyboard to mark in or O to mark out. Once we have it marked in and out, so you can see this, like the blue bracket here is mark in and that's out. Then we're gonna take our footage, so click on it, and then you're gonna see this little hand grippy thing, and then just drag it down and drop it into your sequence or timeline down here. Now, you'll notice that two parts came in. So the top part here, this is the video, and then underneath this kind of solid gray line thing, this is the audio part. So what if you want over here, what if you just wanna drag in video, like you don't want both bits? Then all you have to do is go to this thing right here, so drag video only, so you'd click on that and drag that in. Make sure it's on top of the line. If you try and go below, it won't go because this is audio down here and this is video up there, so you let go. And if you just want audio, you just do the opposite. You grab this thing, and you drag it below the line. Again, if you try and go above, you won't be able to. 
Okay, but what if this is not the only section that you want from this video? There's something else further down, like maybe I want this part right here. Well, then all you have to do is mark in before that point, you know, push play and get the next part. So that's the part that I want right there and then mark out. So now I have a new selection over here and I can just click and drag that into my sequence as well. And then just repeat that process until you've gone through all of your footage and made all of your selections and brought everything that you want as far as footage goes into your timeline. And just so you know, the key to this part of editing, so the part where we are collecting our footage and bringing it into our timeline here, typically known as our first assembly or like a rough draft, is to not worry too much about being precise up here. So if I think this is kind of close, I can just mark in, you know, mark out around where I think it is. I don't have to be super exact. And then what we're gonna do next is within the timeline panel here, we are gonna refine our edit and get it to be the exact way that we want. Okay, so at this point, as you can see, I have deleted all the clips that I had in my timeline before when I was showing you how to cut in and out and then drag the footage in. And I replaced it with footage that's actually good. So I went through my footage and actually found some good clips and plunked those in here with a random song. So the first thing you need to be aware of is that this blue kind of scrubber thing right here operates in the same way that this one did in the source monitor, but now this one, wherever this blue line is, that's what we see up here in the program monitor. Now if I move this back and we push play up here, you can see that it moves along as it plays up here to match. Some of the other important things to take note of in the timeline panel are obviously here is your time, your running time up here. So my clip, like wherever this blue thing is as well, where the line is, it can tell you that that's at 23 seconds right now. So as I move it, you can see the time change there. You also need to know that each of these things is a layer. So this is video layer one, video layer two, video layer three, and then audio one, two, three. And you can move things up to new layers. If you need a new layer up top, just drag it even higher up and it will create a new layer. So there's video layer four. But just be aware that when we start to deal with multiple layers, like clips on different layers, if they happen to overlap, like I'm gonna move this one so it's now above this clip right here. When we move the playhead over to this spot, we're gonna see that we only see the top one. We're not gonna see this one below because whatever's the highest here, that's what we're gonna see. So if you want to see underneath, you can also just click this eyeball here and that will eliminate this whole layer from being visible. And then we can see what's underneath. So that would be this clip right here is underneath. And obviously click the eyeball to bring it back. On the audio side of things, it's just a mute button. So if I click M, like mute here, then everything on this track will be muted. So if you see here, if I play it, you can't hear anything. If you want to lock a layer, so let's say you like this clip, but you don't like the audio with it, then you can do this. You can lock this layer and then click on this and just delete the audio. Another use for the lock tool is, is to maybe lock down your music so you can't mess with it because if it's unlocked and you happen to drag this audio clip down, then it'll break up your music right there and you don't want that because then it's gonna be like the song playing and then the talking and then the song again. You don't want that. Down here we have our slider, so if you click on it and then drag, you can move along your timeline. Or if you click on either of these circles, if you bring the circles closer to each other, you can see that it zooms in up here, making our clips much bigger so we can really get in there and fine tune our editing. And if you click and you separate the circles, it's gonna make everything smaller. So if you have a whole bunch of clips over here, then you might need to slide this to be able to see everything on your timeline. You can also just click plus to zoom in and minus to zoom out as well. Over here, you have your audio levels. So if you pay attention over here and I push play, you can see them, you know, jumping along over here to see how loud our volume is. One way that you can adjust your audio to make it louder or quieter if you need is to click on your clip, go over to effect controls over here, scroll down to where you see audio and volume level and you can just mess with this. So click and slide it to the right, that'll make it go louder, and slide it to the left, that'll make it go quieter. And then last but not least is our tool panel over here. And I'm not gonna go through all of them, I'm gonna focus on a couple of them, but the one I've been using this whole time is the selection tool, 
and it does a whole bunch of different things. So if you click, and you've already seen you can move clips up and down, I've shown you that you can move them left and right. But something that you might not have noticed is that when I move a clip and it gets close to another clip, like the edge of another clip, you see that right there? It suction cups to the edge of the clip and you can see these little triangles that appear. So as I move it here, you can see those little triangles appear. And that's because I have this selected right here, snap in timeline. If I took that off, if I made it white instead of blue, and I move this, it's now not going to suction cup to the edge. It's not going to snap to the edge of another clip, which I find much harder because you're trying to like line this up. You don't know, is it right beside? Is it overlapping? So I like to make sure that this is selected so that wherever we move this, it'll suction cup to the edge of that clip. So if I bring this down and I bring it over, now I can guarantee that I'm lined up at the edge of that clip. And just so you know, you can select, like drag along like this, and select a whole bunch of clips at the same time to be able to move a bunch of them together. But if you do have a gap like this, my suggestion is just to click between it if you wanna get rid of it, and then just click backspace and it'll move them all over to fill in the gap. The other thing you can do is use it to trim the edges. So if you go to the edge of a clip, what I like to do is take my playhead, and if I know I need to trim a little bit off the end of this, I'm gonna put my playhead where I wanna trim it to, and then I just go to the edge where I see that it's red, and then I can just slide it over and I can trim that bit off. Or you can use the same technique to extend the clip if you need to. So just move the blue line where you want it and then extend the clip out. The only other tool that I'm gonna show you in here is the razor tool, and you can either click on it or if you just hit C, it'll switch to that, so that's a shortcut. And this one I'm gonna show you using this Sammy TV clip. And it's pretty obvious, all you're doing is moving the playhead to where you actually wanna slice the clip and then just slice it and then go to where you want it to end. You know, I'm gonna go maybe to, to there and slice the end off. And then you're gonna to have to delete the other bits here. So we go back to the move tool for that or if you can see the shortcut to go back there is just V and that'll switch back to this. And you just click on here and then go backspace to get rid of it click on here and backspace to get rid of it. You can obviously also use it to just split clips in half as well. All right, so that's pretty much everything you need to know about basic editing in Premiere Pro, but if you wanna learn more about how to add text, how to adjust to manipulate your audio, or how to apply effects and transitions, make sure to check out the other videos in my Getting Started with Premiere Pro video series. If you got something out of this video, make sure to drop a like, and if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing, and I'll catch you next time.